Let's talk some short selling and gear definitely towards beginners. So if you're just getting started and not necessarily the stock market, but really any financial market, and you're wondering how short selling works and you wanna understand it better, then I wanna offer you up here a guide with just some definitions and terms so that you have a good idea of what people are talking about when you either hear them say something or just you know read the words. And this all comes from Dennis real quick, because like, and this is why, please, comments, questions, leave those down below. I truly really do read them, but Dennis says, Hey Clay, I really love your videos. I'm still learning about trading. I'm wondering if you could explain to me what are easy to borrow and hard to borrow when someone says those terms. And what does it mean by easy to locate? Thank you for your help as always. Well, Dennis, first off, again, thank you for the comment and I will get to those in a little bit. But first off, those were referred to shorting, which is kind of what spurred this idea for why don't I just do a bunch of terms. So let's hop right in. So at the forefront, what the first thing you need to understand about short selling is this. It's all about prices going down. When prices go down, so this could be a price, it could be a value, but prices value go down, that means that you make money, okay? I realize that sounds kind of bizarre, but yeah, in the world of short selling, you want values, you want prices to drop, to go down. So what that actually is the terms and the definitions? So right here, we could have going short, shorting, just simply short. Whenever you hear any of these terms, all that means, all that's telling you is somebody is entering, right? That is entering a short-sided trade. They are getting into the trade itself by going short, by, hey, I am short, by shorting, all one and the same. They're just saying, hey, you know what? I'm either thinking about entering or I suppose past tense, hey, yeah, I'm short. So if someone says I am short a stock, that means they've technically speaking already entered, but they're in the trade, right? That's what they mean. Or to enter in, well, let's check your English skills here. Let's say somebody says that they short it. Well, that's past tense, right? So past tense means, once again, that they've already entered the trade. So all any variation, and I'm, I'm probably missing some, uh, you know, being a short. So if you are a short, that means you have entered the trade, that you are already inside of the trade, if you are a short. Now, as far as entering, I wanna come over here. So what actually means entering? Well, in the world of trade, or in the world of shorting, you actually sell. Now, I'll just use stocks for the example here, but the first thing you do to enter a short-sided trade is you sell first. And even that terminology, enter a short-sided trade. If somebody says they're on the short side, well, that just means, again, past tense, so they're already in the trade, but they're in a situation where they want the price to go down, and in order to enter, you need to sell. Shorting is you sell first, and then you buy second to exit the trade. Totally crazy, but that's how it works. So let's now go into this next part, and this is where it would be all about, well, all right, how do you exit the trade? So over here we have entering, but now let's talk exiting. So exiting the trade. Very, very straightforward. Now I, I kind of already let the cat out of the bag on this one. In this situation, it means you buy. You buy the stock. Very bizarre, I get it. Second thing you do is buy, but that's just how it works. I should know, wait Clay, how is all this actually working? What dynamics are going on? Um, I'll put a link down below that I've done that's gotten you know hundreds of thousands of views over the, the past couple of years about what is shorting, and it walks you through what's going on behind the scenes. So if you're interested in that, just click the link down below in the uh, description section and you, and you can get that. But that's not the point of this video. I just wanna stay with the terms and definitions. So exiting the trade, you buy, and as far as a bit of terminology that is associated with this, this is what is known, in, known as cover. To cover the position. I better cover my short. Oh, look at all the shorts that are covering. All that means is shorts are exiting the trade. They're getting out. And what does that mean from a trade perspective? Well, there's gonna be buying pressure, right? When lots of shorts are covering or there's covering going on, that just means that there is buying going on because once again, that's how you exit the trade. So cover, covering, I already, here we go, let's English again. What happens? Here's a quiz question. 
If you hear somebody say that they covered, my first question, does, are they still in the trade or not? If you're saying, well, no, Clay, they're not in the trade because covered is past tense, meaning they already exited the position because they bought. So therefore, Clay, no, they're not in the trade because they covered, past tense. Good job, you're understanding the terminology, exactly. So anytime you see the word cover or any sort of you know a, a variation of the term, that just means that there's some sort of attribute going on with exiting the trade, which means there's buying going on. And then to Dennis's point here, what are all these things about kind of, and this is just more so the, the overarching logistics of things, but in order to short, and again, that video will explain it more, you need to actually borrow. That's the main driver here of shorting is everything revolves around, you need to borrow shares and stock from somebody else and then you sell them and then yes, you will, you'll eventually give them back. But like I said, I don't wanna to go too far down that rabbit hole. But the word borrow is the key dynamic because that's what's going on here. And to Dennis's point, when I started this off, there are a couple of different situations out there. You could have hard to borrow or you can have easy to borrow. Now, now let your gut instincts, let your common sense take you here. If something is hard to borrow, that means that it's not that difficult to short that particular stock. But if something is uh, very, very, I might've said that backwards. If something is hard to borrow, then it's gonna be very difficult to short to the stock. Not every stock you see out there, you can go out there and short because there are risks that are associated with it. And those risks, you know, your, your broker needs to keep those in mind because they don't wanna get roasted. They don't want to have to go out of business. So they're not gonna let you just go out there and borrow any stock you want so that you can short it. In those situations, again, well, that would be hard. Hard to borrow. It, it's just not gonna be, you know, you see it a lot of times, oh, there's a penny stock. Oh, I'm just gonna go short it. And then you try and your broker's like, no, there, there's no shares available. It is a hard to borrow stock because most brokers aren't gonna let you short a penny stock. Then the exact opposite is true for easy to borrow. If something's easy, well then, yeah, it's not a big deal. You can find some, you, you can be able to short the stock. This is really gonna be the case for you know any big, big blue chip company that you can think of. There's gonna be plenty of shares out there because there's so much volume that it's gonna be considered easy to borrow and therefore easy to short. So when you hear, you could just replace borrow with short. If something is hard to borrow, it's just hard to short it because there's not stocks out there or there's not that many shares out there to you know borrow. If something is easy to borrow or easy to short, well, that's exactly what it means. So my recommendation in order to make the terminology make the most sense, is just replace borrow with the word short. And there, there you go. You have hard to short, easy to short. And then the final thing that was brought up by Dennis is this word of locates. Now locates, this is just for all those slick, these fancy people out there that wanna sound smart, that wanna sound cool, like, oh man, the locates are so hard. All that means is, what's the ability to, well, locate shares to short? If something has lots of locates, that means it's what? Well, that means it would be easy to borrow because, well, it's easy to locate shares to borrow, right? And then the other one would be if someone's like, oh man, those locates, they are hard. Man, there's barely any locates out there. What does that mean? Well, it's hard to find things to locate that you could borrow to short. So in other words, that just means how easy or difficult is it to short a stock? This is all pretty much the exact same thing just different ways of saying it. So whenever anybody says locates, they're really just talking about how difficult or easy it is to, to borrow stock to be able to actually short it. And then the final term here that I wanna focus on is maybe you've heard it, a short squeeze. So the short squeeze, I'm not gonna spend very much time with it, but I'll put an image up. You can see the video that I've already done on it. And I go all into what a short squeeze is, you know, how it works and everything like that. So again, you, I'll just put that link down in the comment section below and you can get an entire video on short squeeze because that's a little bit more in depth process um, and you know, but how it works. Uh, it's, but it's good that you're watching this video first because in that video, it's gonna make a whole lot more sense. So these are the terms and definitions that you're gonna need to understand about shorting and, and if you wanna understand it in its full capacity. But hopefully this helps. If you do have any questions or if, I, if you feel like I left something out, please leave those down in the comment section below. I do read comments and I will reply to them. So any sort of a, a, additional assistance if needed, like I said, I'm pretty sure I got everything covered, but no pun intended. But if uh, I did miss something, just let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, a couple of requests on my end. First off, please hit that like button. That's a very timely and efficient way to communicate to me that you enjoy these videos. 
Also, like I said, comments, questions, suggestions, leave those down below. And then also check out the channel as a whole. And if you like what you see, I'd love to have you as a subscriber to the channel. So hopefully you decide to hit that red subscribe button. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm going to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too good, way too, good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.